situation, but we're going to start today with the Cavs, and as always, a word from FanDuel. You can get buckets right now on FanDuel, which is America's number one sportsbook, and right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 150 bucks if your team wins. You can bet on all your favorite NBA players and teams with quick bets, live same-game parlays, exclusive props, and so much more. And right now, FanDuel's got something special for UCSS listeners. Be sure to check out FanDuel's Profit Boost tokens in the app and use it for Saturday's UNC Duke game. Profit Boost tokens will be available before the big game and will help you get some big-time profits and big-time wins over the weekend. Just view your account page now to learn more about that Profit Token Boost. Just visit FanDuel.com slash UCSS. Download the app to shoot your shot. Send us your winning tickets. And as always, FanDuel is an official partner of the NBA and an official partner of the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show. Cavs lost yesterday, guys, 112-101. We talked about, you know, not being able to follow up the Dallas great win. Same thing happened here. Nobody really had a, a huge game. The leading scorer was, was Jared Allen. Well, he had a really great game. But in terms of, like, total points, he led the team with 18 points. He did have 19 rebounds, and he shot really well. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, not a great day for... Darius Garland, even though he didn't get enough turnovers for you, and and, just, and, <laughs> and and Dean Wade, who got the start, there was no Dean Wade magic. That only lasted one game. Well, I mean, you couldn't expect that. He I know, was I'm go kidding. Absolutely yeah. crazy. Yeah, again. I, they just it's, it, it, you, it's hard when you got a back to back. That's first of all. You know, you just exhausted a lot of energy to beat Boston. So I knew that they come out kind of flat. But I always think it comes down to that man right there on that picture right there. Listen, you got the ball in your hand. You the facilitator. You got to score points. Like, you can't just keep having these 15 points per game. Less. I understand that you're great at distributing the basketball, but you also are a playmaker. You also can be a, a shooter. When people aren't get, when you're not getting the best out of your teammates and you're not getting everybody around and they're not getting buckets, you got to be that guy. I mean, Donovan is the is the prime example. When people ain't getting things done, he say, get out the way, give me the ball, and I'll make something happen. You got to take over that role. Somebody right now in the absence has to step up and take that role. You know, you, the shooting wasn't great last night, and that's something that, you know, when they went 18-2, and two, they were doing, they were shooting the yeah. ball at a high clip. Um, the shooting wasn't great. But like I said, I'm not going to look too much into it. Um, I did think that they should have won that game, especially Trey Young didn't play. I thought they had more than enough to win that game. So I'm not going to look too deep into it. I'm going to just say that that's a bump in the road because yeah. they was tired from the Boston series. Yeah. Three-point shooting, Jason. Did, you know, Levert, Merrill, and Garland combined to go 5 for 28 from three and yeah. 10 for 40 overall. And yeah. that happens. Yeah. Like, it, it's the NBA. Like, the guys will tell you it's a make or miss league. Like, they had a lot of good looks last night. They didn't go in. I mean, Sam Merrill. Yeah. When's the last time he went 0 for 9 ever yeah. in a game? Like, it, it happens the game sometimes. Before, yeah, but it, but well, it was weird I because he's in a little bit of a <laughs> Mike made the point <laughs> yesterday. Right you I don't think he was you said this was a big, huge game for them, Mike. You said that. So, you got to comment on it now. You yeah, also I mean, I, said I Atlanta's thought... defense stinks. And, you know, so is it. They what? actually got a ton of open looks. If you go back and watch their shot yeah. selection, they just couldn't buy a bucket last night. And they I saw the number. They were 6 for 21 on open threes. If you don't make more than about 50% of your open looks, these are like yeah. open looks you should make at 60%, 70%. They shot 6 for 21. You're going to struggle to win games. And you saw in the third quarter, they, they went on an incredible run. They were down 20 points again. Make this whole push back. And then just ran out of gas. It's the yep. second night of a back-to-back. -back. Yeah. Atlanta was also on the second night of the back-to-back, -back, so you can't say, well, they were gas versus a fresh team. But it looked like they exerted so much energy down the stretch in the third quarter, down the stretch of that, that run to come back into the game that they just kind of ran out of gas. To Jason's point, it's a make-or-miss league. They missed a ton of shots last night. You have to hope. 22% yeah, from three. Yeah, you have to hope. You're never going to see Dane Wade, Dean Wade go five for five and shoot eight for eight in a quarter like they did yeah. uh, against Boston. You also hope. Can't hope they shoot like they shot last night. It has to be a happy medium. And just like last week yeah. against Dallas when I said they probably should have been 1-1, one one, well, they should have been 1-1 one one in this two-game back-to-back, too. They just happened to win the game they probably should have lost and lost the game they probably should have won. By the way, we did uh, – and I think, I'm think i pretty sure Jason was here. I don't think Tyvis was here for this. We did – I think it was over-unders or – we did some segment right likely? before I went on vacation. What's more likely? What's more likely? And one of them was Isaac Okoro's three-point shooting versus Sam Merrill's three-point shooting. And you guys laughed at me. 
Y'all all picked Merrill. I said Akuro. I thought I picked Akuro. No, you guys all said Merrill. I wasn't here. I wasn't on that day. I, I wasn't on that about. day. Either. I'll go back and check the records. You guys all said I will. You guys all said Merrill, and I was like, Merrill's been I, brutal. Last I don't two know. Games. I remember a question it's about if he could games. if he could maintain a forty percent. Yeah, that, I remember that question. Yeah, yeah, that was the question. Better right. chance of happening. Merrill. No, but it was like that versus Akuro. You gave two percentages. Yes. It was like Merrill forty four and Akuro forty two, whatever it was. Isaac at forty. Yeah. Better chance to finish the second half of the last 27 games of that race. I you said Merrill. No. He, he been on the Merrill bandwagon. Exactly. He definitely I'm said Merrill. Skeptical. <laughs> One well, Mike's not a liar. So I'm I said, I said Isaac because it was a lower volume. All right. What so he it? only had to shoot better. And speaking of Merrill real yeah. quick, I want to say something on the record here. And then I got a point about DG that I, I noticed last night. I'm curious if you guys picked up. It's been a rough two games. If you're on Merrill Island like I am, if you have bought property on Merrill Island, these last two games have not been great. It's been a hurricane. Not selling my stock whatsoever. I don't care if he's two for 15 in the last two games. Steve, take the graphic, please. Whatever you want to say, bail me out. Bail me out. I don't care if his numbers look atrocious in the last two games with extended minutes. Seven points as a start in 48 minutes. Not great. I am not selling my Merrill Island stock whatsoever. Still think he has to play down the stretch just because even if he's not making shots, there's a certain gravitational pull he brings that opens up space. Well, but will that continue? It's not like he – this is the first time he's ever really shot the ball like this in his career. I mean, yeah, I know he hasn't played a ton, mm. but if you look at his three-point shooting before this year, it wasn't that good. Well, a lot of that is... I mean, he hadn't shot the rhythm. ball that yeah. much. I'm gonna tell He's you. an elite shooter. At the end of the day, I'm not, I'm not worried after two bad games. Okay. What I just want to make calm the eases of everybody. What I'm going to tell you is he keep doing that. He's going to really get himself out of that. When we get to those playoff rotations, you... I'm gonna be in a in your long There's plenty sleeves. of time though. I'm gonna tell plenty you that. Well, you know, well, keep your warm up on. No, Struess has given him a lot of opportunities, and he's not taking advantage of it right that's now. That's right. Yeah. And that's the concerning part is we know that it's JB's already grudgingly when he plays ten, he didn't want to play ten. He's he's on the record. He said I don't like playing ten. Yeah. So he's looking for a reason not to play him, and two of sixteen is a pretty good reason not to play him. So you have to take advantage of your opportunities when you have them. And he just hadn't done the last two games. And again, like, he had a lot of good looks last night. I didn't see the whole game, so I had it on in the background type night. But from what I saw, he had a lot of good looks. They just didn't go down. And, and that happens. Yeah. Like, guys aren't even, – even NBA guys aren't going to make every open shot. Let's talk about Evan Mobley. Wait, can we do yeah. one more thing on Garland before oh, we get yeah, to Mobley? Yeah. I, I, I've noticed this the last kind of two weeks. And I'm curious if you guys have noticed this too. But since he's come back from injury, we know he lost almost 15 pounds – with the fractured jaw because he couldn't eat solid food. And since he's come back, he's definitely a little lighter than he was playing at last season the year before. I think the lack of, I don't want to say strength, but it just looks light. Defense, defenders are able to kind of push him around. He's like really hesitant to draw contact in the paint, which is what he was really, really good at the last two seasons. And he's settling for more jump shots. But part of the reason I think his turnovers are up, Tyvis, and I apologize last night for him screwing your parlay by not turning the ball over, <laughs> is he kind of just gets in the paint without a plan, isn't comfortable going into the defender to draw contact, try to get an and one, and he's in the air and he doesn't have a ton of options, and that's why we've seen a bunch of passes get deflected. I'm not sure, Jason. Uh, well, none of that's good, uh, obviously. No, I'm not saying it's good, but I think that's yeah. part of the struggles is he's right. settling well, for well, his outside opportunity. He, well, what you just said aggressive. is – he need to get the protein shakes in him, and you yeah. better go Chipotle or, or something like that. How get easy you a fat is it for or something? Go, go to ahead, Five Guys yourself. and get you a double burger or something like that. Yeah. Get you a box of pizza. Eat the pee whole. Well, there's box. good weight and bad weight. Yeah, yeah but that's what I'm saying. <laughs> what you mean? I watch, listen. I watch my boy Ryan Shazier at Ohio State eat a box of he's pizza. He's a linebacker every day before practice. Tyvis, he's a linebacker. He's he had playing to, point he had guard. To, he got to put on weight. What? I know, but when you're running playing basketball every day, it's what? not easy. Probably you not got, easy to what, put on weight. You got to put it on somehow. Listen. What you I'm wanna... the authority here on putting on weight, <laughs> so don't question me on that. <laughs> is what is what I'm saying? Do you guys be yeah. maybe believe that that could be I part mean, of the reason? I, it sounds legit to me, but Jason, don't you think it's hard for a guy like Darius Garland to put on 15 pounds in season? It's almost impossible. Yeah, because they like I mean, Mike knows this. They lose weight as right. the season goes on because they're running literally multiple miles in a day. Yeah. I used to watch Kyrie and Dion eat chicken fingers before every game when they were like 19 and 20 coming to the league. I'm like, oh my God, how do you guys 
but I mean, yeah. nineteen what you and twenty. Mean? What you burn mean? it off like that. Yeah, that was the pregame meal. They would yeah. order chicken fingers off the menu, Good day and they bring them in. It's like, oh man, they, like the chicken fingers from the concession yeah. stand. Yeah, oh. like they had a little menu <laughs> that the players could order off of. Oh wow, and they would. I mean, they they weren't up at. <laughs> Section 138, ordering right. chicken fingers. Yeah. But there was like a little me- a menu of yeah. stuff. And as guys get older, nutrition becomes a little bit more important to them. As, and when, you know, That's not when true. they start to figure things That's out. That's not true. I know a guy who was 30 years old in the league playing at his best, going to McDonald's or Burger King oh at the God. NBA. Well, most of them don't do that. <laughs> most <laughs> of them start to figure get it out at some point. All right, let's talk about Mobley for a minute, Jason. What do you know about his, his status at this point? Uh, not good. He We said yesterday he's out for an extended amount of time, and like we had to sort of go over the, the wording on that a yeah. little bit. And I mean, the Cavs released that was the statement from them that he had an MRI and and, uh, he'll be reevaluated in a week. We were kind of hearing yesterday, Joe, Sean, and I were hearing more like a month, but we settled nothing official. So we settled on extended period of time. He's not going to be back for a while. I think it could be a month is probably realistic. Yeah. But officially, what we're officially going with is an extended period. So the playoffs start in about six weeks. Yeah. It's not good. I mean, at this point, let's say he comes back in a month. Yeah. Is he? What's his role? I mean, best guess. I if think, he plays five games before the end of the regular season. Well, it's going to go back to what they were doing when he came back the first time, and you're going to stagger. Yeah, you're going to stagger. Maybe that's better. It, it, it probably is better. It is. You worry about. You worry about if he's. If he misses multiple weeks, not even a month, if he misses two weeks, which is very realistic, what kind of shape is he in? Can he get his rhythm? All that that sort of thing. Uh, but I, I think that, you know, I, I wrote after the Boston game, like, I think we have enough evidence now. Their best lineup is one big on the right. floor at a time. Now, the problem is, Mike and I were talking about this on the Cavs podcast last night. Two of their best players on the team are Evan Mobley and Jared Allen, but they're at their best with only one of them on the floor. It's a problem. Like it's it's hard to. Why does that have to be a problem? I don't understand. Because that. you want your best guys on the floor. <laughs> but it, it should. Evan Mobley's a better basketball player than George Niang. But if the team is not better with Evan well, Mobley, then that's, that, you got to go with that. And that's what I'm saying. Like it's yeah. it's. You want your it's best tricky. guys on I, the floor. I, think, right. I right. think his injury tells you it answers a problem that they was maybe was going to run into in the postseason. And I think you're right. You was looking for who do you count on to be the backup center, or big man. Yeah. Well, if you stagger in the minutes, that right there helps you get the lead where you don't have to depend on who the heck is the backup center anyway. Uh, well, I mean, Tristan Damian, if he's healthy. Damian yeah. Jones. Damian Jones. Yeah, well, look at the game, Jared, I mean, Look Damian at Jared Allen last night. He he played like he was playing before Mobley came back yeah. last night. That's what I'm saying. So you got to you got to continue to stagger them. So you yeah. at least have a good. But the difference between Allen and Mobley, I think, is that when Mobley's in, you can go five out. You got five. You got five guys who could potentially shoot. Now you got to shoot it at a more confidently. Yeah. But it's still he still poses a little threat. To a defender, like, okay, he can shoot it a little bit. But I, I actually think G was right yesterday. I, and and he, didn't, he didn't say the first part, but the second part, like, Evan Mobley is not, doesn't play with a ton of confidence, it seems like. Whereas Jared Allen, he plays, you know, I, you could argue, well, he talked about the lights being bright. I'm about I get to say, it. come on now. I you, get it. You're putting the most little of extra the time, on it. Mo, he, Jared Allen knows who he is. He knows what he's good at, and he knows what he's not good at. That's a fact. And with Mobley, he doesn't. <laughs> I don't know that he knows, or he's confident. He knows. He knows that if I'm checking somebody, I can stop them. Or if I get beat, I know Jared's down yeah. there. So I, I, I don't think it's a lack of confidence with Evan. I think Evan Mobley's confident. It's, it's. I don't know if it's body language, if it's demeanor. It. He's just very passive and laid back. It, that's just who he is. He doesn't yeah. have, say a lot. Yeah. Like he's just, he's just kind of. It, it, so he comes off maybe as he's not confident in what he can do. I, Evan Mobley's had a great year. Like he's really had a really good year. Now he hasn't developed the three point shot that I and a lot of no, other people okay. wanted him to. It's okay. And it may never come, but he's had a really good year. I mean, we talked about it the other day. He gets you a quiet 20 and 12, 20 and 13. You look up and go, well, damn, I didn't see that. He I, blew my part. But here's the thing. Right, so. 
that's a you false, know, that's a the, false state. That reminds me, and this is this is not a fair comparison, but I'm because one guy has proven more than the other in his career. But I, I'll use the comparison anyway because I, all of a sudden, uh, a lot of people have said, "Well, you know, if Deshaun Watson's just pretty good, that's good enough." No, 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 no it's not good. Enough. <laughs> The, we didn't. The Browns didn't trade seventy-two things and pay him that money for Correct. him to be pretty good. They Correct. paid him to be a superstar. Yeah. When they drafted Evan Mobley, yeah, he's he's a pretty good player. Yeah. They drafted him to be a superstar. Yes. Now he may never be. And he's twenty-two and in his third I, year in no, the league. I, you're right. Yeah. And because they traded for Donovan Mitchell, it's changed how he's been. And right now, it's not about developing. It's right not. now, it's, it's about, about trying to win in the playoffs. It's about winning. And part of it's on him. You yeah. know, like. Mike made the point I think, a couple months ago, and he's right. Like, you know, Chet Holmgren, Oklahoma City's winning, hmm. and, right? And and he just jumped right in, and yeah. and he's taken as off a rookie day one. essentially because yeah. he was hurt last year. But and and guys develop at different rates, sure. and it's not the same for everybody. And Evan Mobley's, I keep saying, he's going to be fine. You know, four or five years from now, he's going to be a monster in this league. Yeah. What's gonna What's it going to look like around him? You know, I have no idea. But. Yeah. It hasn't come, I think, as quickly as, as I thought because I, I was one of the first ones to say yeah. he's the number one option on a championship team. I absolutely believe right. he's going to be that, and I still believe that's the Ooh. case. But I got to see it. a couple parts of his game certainly yeah. haven't developed as quickly as I thought that they you would. You know, it's funny. But he still had a great year. In his defense, as you talk about with his age, I was watching uh, MLB TV yesterday. They, were doing, they do this 30 teams in 30 days yeah. or whatever, and yesterday's one was about the Cubs, so I'm watching it, and – they they asked Craig Council, who's the new Cubs manager, about this kid named Pete Crow Armstrong, mm -hmm. who's their top prospect. Mm -hmm. And he made his debut in the majors last year, and he struggled. He went 0 for 14, but he, 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 you know, whatever. And they said, Craig, you know, what's what's you know what's going on with Pete Crow Armstrong? Is he going to make this team? And he's like, you know, he's a college senior. Yeah. And it, I was like, oh, yeah. sometimes you get, and with basketball, every player's like that. Yeah. You know, like Evan Mobley would be. Wouldn't this be a this senior, be a senior year? This would be a senior so, year. So when we think about many of the great players who have been good as rookies, a lot of them played longer in college, especially back in the day. Yeah. Now there's not as many guys who are great right away, and the ones that are are super special. Well, right. That's LeBron's fault. Yeah, but LeBron is a once in a lifetime player. It's LeBron's fault. LeBron ruined the dunking contest, and he yeah. ruined how we look at young players. He did ruin free dunk. agency. Yep. Ruin free agency. <laughs> by, by the way, how many years did it take for Giannis to be a great player? Whoa! Since took, he came in the league. No. Since he came in the league. That's false. Been dominant. What are you talking about? No, he about? hasn't. Giannis has never at one point in his life not been the best player. Mike, what, how many years into the league till Giannis? Giannis as a rookie. Great numbers. Averaged 24 minutes per game. 6.8 points per game, four rebounds. That's, yeah. good. That's good. That's decent. Giannis <laughs> wasn't even, an, I mean, his fourth season. Hmm. In his third season, he had similar numbers to Mobley, in all honesty. Okay. 17 we, points, eight rebounds, five assists, a block, and a steal. And they were they were like a middling team, weren't they, at the time? I don't even think. They might have just worked the playoffs that year. Yeah, they were, they were average. They were, they were fine. They weren't great, but they were fine. So the year after that, year four. Yeah. Is when he jumped up into the MVP. He, he got MVP votes his fourth season, his fifth season, his sixth and seventh season is when he won the back to back MVP awards. Hmm. But has his it fourth taken... season is where he jumped from being a good player yeah. to being a good player. <laughs> ha has it, has it, can you guys think of it? So he took to year four. Is there a like, is, is, is next year the last chance for him to get to great or no? No, I don't. Are there some guys it takes five, six, even seven years? I wouldn't say next year is his last chance. I wouldn't say to be that. great. When I'm not saying be. He might just he, be. Listen, if he's just this the rest of his career, that's a good NBA he's player. A good, he's got a good career. What but, is his? When is he scheduled to get paid? Well, that's a whole different discussion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, <laughs> next year, yeah. will be his fourth year, <laughs> and they'll make the determination on his next contract. So, so, so yeah, so yeah, next year he needs. I to will say this to Bulls. Bulls question. I just went and looked at a couple different players. Year three to year four. If you don't make the jump, then we probably have a pretty good idea. Doesn't mean you can't get better. Yeah. But 
I'm, I like Jalen Brown, for example. Jalen Brown jumped from 13 to 22 points a game year three to four. Giannis made a similar jump year three to year four. Right. Stop uh, you can go him through to a couple other guys. What was Jokic? How long did it you take? You can't Jokic? compare. You can't compare Evan to a guy like that's like. Come on now. That's that's apples and oranges. It's Giannis. Yeah. Let's talk about the best player in the NBA, Jokic. What? What is uh, Jokic? <laughs> He was his first All Star game, his fourth season. There you go. <laughs> Jump. He was, uh, you know, his numbers were good. As a rookie, he averaged ten and seven. His second season, seventeen and ten. His third season, he was eighteen, ten and six. His fourth season, twenty two, eleven and nine. Yeah, I mean, so, so there are a lot of players in recent history that it was year four, four that 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 they put it all together, and maybe that will be for Evan next year. We'll see. But this year, it's. His season's shot at this point. It pretty feels much. It. it feels it. Yeah. yeah. It's like, and, and you know, again, Mike and I were talking about this on the podcast yesterday. Anytime I would talk to people around the league, it was always Evan with four shooters around him. Nobody right. talks about Jarrett. Yeah. So, I, like, <laughs> they, they may have to make a decision this offseason and how they're going to go about this and, right. and what they're going to do. And Well, and, and what happens with Donovan will be a, a what big What happens with Donovan will be a big well. factor in that yeah, yeah. as well, yeah. But they, they could have – I mean, we'll see how this goes, how this postseason run goes, but they could have a lot of hard decisions to make mm. this 